Hello and welcome back to Skypothesis. We are two brothers who are dedicated to fantasy, roleplay, and keeping the magic of Skyrim alive. We take inspiration from all across fantasy worlds to create fresh, unique, and super cool original Skyrim character builds. This week we are excited to showcase an incredibly unique necromancer known as the Aramancer. Through exploitation of the Ethereal Crown and the ultra-powerful Ritual Stone, this 100% support-focused High Elf will provide you with an unforgettable Skyrim experience. Let's get started. The Aramancer grew up in the Somerset Isles. Trained from a young age as a priestess to the various divines of the Elven Pantheon, she spent her days in prayer and supplication, learning and mastering the ways of her forebears. She was a naturally brilliant student in the temple, though her constant questions and curiosity began to wear on her elders. To distance themselves from her tiring questions, her elders assigned her to watch over and carry out burial rites for the dead, where she would mostly be working by herself tending to the crypts. She took to this task well and became fascinated with the dead and all things surrounding death itself. With no one around to answer her unending questions, she turned to books. Fortunately, the ancient crypts underneath the Temple of Alinor were filled with ancient scrolls and books, many of which had not been touched since the Second Era. She was curious about burial rituals from religions around the world, the best ways to care for crypts, and eventually discovered forgotten scrolls depicting the black art of necromancy. As the years passed, she carried out her duties with exactness, but would diligently pursue her own studies in private. One fateful day, she dusted off an old book found deep in her keep's library, The Black Arts on Trial. This book provided an account of a debate on the ethics of necromancy between Voth Karolis, the Archmagister of the Mages Guild, and Ulceta Grakog, the most learned mage from Orsinium. The Aramancer, ever hungry for knowledge about the dead, relished every page but one passage in particular set her mind turning and made her question the dogmas of her culture. The passage states, Necromancy is poorly understood. We will not make it disappear by ignoring it. Necromancy is inherently dangerous. One cannot dabble in it. All schools of magicka are dangerous to the uninitiated. A simple fireball spell from the School of Destruction can cause great harm when cast by a novice, not only to others but to the mage himself. The Aramancer's mind was opened, and she found herself agreeing with Grakog's argument. Magic surrounding the dead, including necromancy, was incredibly misunderstood. Was it truly evil to use a dead body when its soul had already left it behind? She came to the conclusion that it was not, and began secretly studying and practicing necromancy deep in her crypts. Years passed, and her crypt became her secret workshop for necromancy. Meanwhile, as the Thalmor continued their occupation of Cyrodiil, there came a need for a priest to oversee the safe return of fallen soldiers to their homeland. The Aramancer services were requisitioned by the Thalmor, and she was assigned to Cyrodiil to reclaim fallen foot soldiers and bring them back to Alinor for a proper High Elf burial. She had a couple servants assigned to help, but it wasn't nearly enough. It took several days and a lot of grueling manual labor to load a couple dozen coffins onto their boat, Dr. Breville. On the journey back, her brain hatched an idea, why not let these dead Thalmor carry their own coffins? Upon arriving at the Somerset Isles, dock workers were shocked and horrified to see the gangplanks drop and the Aramancer lead a legion of dead soldiers off the boat and marching to the temple crypts. She genuinely expected praise for her resourcefulness, but was instead met with an uproar of disapproval. Some wanted her banished and others wanted her hanged. In the confusion and chaos, she managed to slip away quietly and stow away on a separate boat bound for Cyrodiil. She clearly didn't belong, and resolved to continue her studies with more open-minded mages. In the following weeks, she learned of the College of Winterhold, a school in the frozen north that allows the open practice of necromancy. Filled with hope, she sets course for a place where she could truly be herself. For the roleplay, we wanted to create a unique support mage necromancer hybrid who didn't follow the evil creepy stereotypes usually associated with necromancer archetypes. The Aramancer is not evil, she is a scholar of magic who just genuinely believes in the virtues of necromancy. If Skyrim had special stats from Fallout, she would have a charisma stat of 1. Her years spent with nothing but dead bodies and books have not helped her social skills, and she often forgets how to interact with living people. In spite of being a scholar of world religion, she struggles understanding why the populace will not let go of their superstitions. 
A dead body's soul has already left its body, and has no use for the flesh and sin you left behind. What do they need it for? They're already dead. This sentiment will drive her roleplay. Her first stop is the College of Winterhold, where a master necromancer practices openly, and teaches courses. Becoming the Archmage is fitting for a scholar like her, and she hopes that this new position will help her influence the opinions of other mages in Skyrim. Her interactions with Ancano are especially enjoyable if you consider her backstory fleeing from the Thalmor. Even if he puts together who she is, there's almost nothing he can do about it. The key to this build is the well-known Ethereal Crown Ritual Stone exploit. The Ethereal Crown allows you to keep an extra Standing Stone ability in the crown itself, and it resets the stored ability when you remove the crown and put it on again. So, even though the Ritual Stone has a 24-hour cooldown, you can remove and re-equip it to raise the dead indefinitely. This is seriously broken. We generally balance our builds for Adept difficulty, but this one is so OP that you will have a more enjoyable experience if you play on Legendary. You will absolutely steamroll with your army of undead, and building up that momentum feels fantastic. However, you will still need to position yourself carefully, and legendary enemies can kill you in a single hit. This high-risk, high-reward style made for a unique and satisfying playthrough. Speaking of the Ritual Stone exploit, let's discuss how it's role-played. Each incarnation of Elder Scrolls titles handles these greater powers a little differently, and in Skyrim, you don't choose the sign you are born under at character creation. Skyrim moves those buffs to standing stones scattered throughout the map. While this method does allow more character flexibility, it raises questions on how to roleplay it. Are the standing stone powers to be roleplayed as the character's constellation sign? Or are they spells acquired at the stones themselves? For this character, we chose to roleplay a little bit of both. She was born under the sign of the Ritual, but doesn't gain the Ritual spell until discovering this ancient place of power. If you are familiar with the work of classic fantasy writer Jack Vance, you might be aware that in the Dying Earth series, the wizards must prepare spells ahead of time because they can only be cast once. After the spell is used, it is forgotten completely, and the wizard must head back to the tomes and memorize its techniques again from scratch. We like to roleplay the greater powers of Skyrim the same way. Once the spell is used, it is literally forgotten for 24 hours, and cannot be cast again. With this perspective, we imagine the ethereal crown as a one-of-a-kind magical artifact that removes this limitation for a single spell. While wearing the crown, she becomes the ultimate necromancer, summoning the astrological, necromantic powers of Aetherius on command, bypassing the natural laws of magic meant to keep balance. We roleplay that she literally found a way to break the natural laws of magic. An event of this nature has not happened on Tamriel since the days of the Dwemer, when they created the tools of Kagrimac. She is a hybrid character, a necromancer, and 100% support mage. She will cast no offensive spells and swing no weapons at her enemies. She hires the burliest Nord she can as her personal bodyguard, who gets the ball rolling for her undead armies. We chose Stenvar from Windhelm because of his aggressive AI. He won't hesitate to dive in and take the brunt of the damage. He can be hired for 500 gold at any point and has a level cap of 40. If you find after level 40 that he is getting a bit too spongy, you can go for a nice house Carl like Argus the Bulwark, who has a cap of 50. The most important thing in our mind for the roleplay is just having a burly, cronk like character from Emperor's New Groove, who fills the role of hired muscle and gets the job done without questioning her methods. You can kit him out with whatever armor you want, but keeping the gold and black theme using Dwemer or Elven armor looks really nice and fits the aesthetic. As a knowledge seeker, it is easy to roleplay almost every side quest in the game. So long as there is knowledge to be found, the Aramancer will be there. Relevant side quests include Blood on the Ice, The Pale Lady, Forbidden Legend, and The Wolf Queen Awakened. Becoming Thane of every hold is a good first step to changing the minds of the people regarding necromancy. For the Aramancer's outfit, we chose to wear adept robes of restoration for the yellow-gold restoration-themed color. Fine boots and Thalmor bracers are worn for a black accent, and the ethereal crown is of course worn on her head. She will also wear the Necromancer amulet and a ring of Fortify Illusion or Fortify Alteration. In terms of weapons, Conjuration or Restoration staffs are good to have on hand in case you bottom out of Magicka. 
While she is a 100% support mage, she will also want to acquire the Bound Dagger, specifically to banish Daedra and for another reason we'll mention in the special move section of the video. Moving on to spells and shouts. As a 100% support focused character, the Aramancer will make frequent use of the School of Restoration, namely Close Wounds, Greater Ward, and Heal Other. She will primarily be healing her follower, as you cannot heal the undead without the vampire exclusive spell, Heal Undead. While a fitting spell for this character, we ultimately decided that due to the Ritual Stone exploit, keeping her undead alive is much less important. She will also use illusion spells to buff her army, notably Courage, Rally, and Call to Arms. The Ritual Stone is your primary method of raising the undead, but situationally you may want to manually raise two undead thrall bandit chiefs. They are especially useful while you work on acquiring the ethereal crown, but once obtained we didn't feel the need to keep them with us permanently. In the base game, NPCs will constantly comment on the dangerous spell you are using, and we've even had this break quests before. NPCs have become stuck in a loop commenting on the thralls and ended up refusing to give out their quests. So while thralls are useful, it's a good idea to dismiss all your minions outside of town. She has hope for a future where necromancy is accepted, but for now, she begrudgingly acknowledges she must practice social norms. For shouts, the Aramancer will use Battle Fury, Marked for Death, and Soul Tear. Marked for Death is extremely useful for taking down tough enemies, though it's usually not necessary if your army of undead is at full strength. Now for stats and perk spread. We leveled the Aramancer with 3 in Magicka and 1 in Health. You generally shouldn't be getting hit, as your army will act as a meat shield and take the brunt of enemy damage. Most of the time, you will be calling the shots from the back. But a stray arrow or spell can take you out pretty quickly if you don't have any perks in health. She will of course be using the Ritual Stone, but with the Ethereal Crown there is also room for the Atronach Stone, allowing Magicka absorption at the expense of slightly lower Magicka regen. Fortunately, the High Elf Racial Power Highborn can quickly replenish your Magicka if you're in dire straits. The Aramancer will never be without a good pool of Magicka. For the skill trees, most of them are entirely optional and do not augment the Ritual Stone exploit in any meaningful way. Illusion and Conjuration are mandatory, but everything else is really up to your discretion. By the time we hit level 40, these are the perks we included. In Conjuration, take the Novice Through Master perks, Mystic Binding, Soul Stealer and Oblivion Binding, Dual Casting, Necromancy, Dark Souls, and Twin Souls. In Illusion, take the Novice Through Master perks, Dual Casting, and then the entire right side of the tree up to Master of the Mind. This will allow you to buff your undead army and make them unstoppable. In Alteration, take the Novice Through Expert perks, Alteration Dual Casting, 3 in Mage Armor, Stability, and Atronach. In Restoration, take the Novice Through Adept perks, Regeneration, Ward Absorb, and 2 in Recovery. Finally, we will be putting 2 perks in the Sneak Tree, 1 in Stealth, and 1 in Backstab. This is only taken to make dismissing your thralls easier before heading into town. If you plan to play past level 40, you can certainly add more to Restoration and Alteration. The Ritual Stone is so OP that these skill trees can be heavily modified without significantly affecting her playstyle. Alright, it's time to move into the Aramancer's special moves. We create special move combinations for our builds to make gameplay interesting and unique, and we found that there are near infinite move combinations. We love seeing what you've come up with. Her first special move is called Empowered Legion. Performed by using the Ritual Stone power while you are charging up the Master Illusion spell Call to Arms. This quick succession of spells raises an army far stronger than your basic Ritual Stone summon. Call to Arms increases target's aggressiveness, health, and stamina for 10 minutes. Note that this spell will augment the abilities on both friend and foe, so it's often best to empower your army when enemies aren't around. Next, we have a simple but important utility move called Dismiss Thrall. This is performed by using the shout Marked for Death and getting a backstab on your thralls with the Bound Dagger. There's nothing more annoying than a moaning thrall following you around a city. Combined with the comments from townsfolk and guards, it's definitely in your best interest to dismiss your thrall before entering a city. Marked for Death plus a 6x sneak bonus on your dagger provides an easy way to dump your thrall. Once you're done conducting business in town, you can resummon your minions and carry on with your adventures. 
Her final special move is called Ozidal's Frozen Curse, performed by slipping on Ozidal's Ring of Necromancy when your undead army is deep into enemy ranks. This ring causes any creature you have reanimated to explode for 50 points of frost damage when hit. While 50 points isn't a huge amount by itself, when you take into account how many minions you can raise with the Ritual Stone, it gets chaotic quickly. Use this move when you want to quickly end a skirmish in an over-the-top and dramatic way. And with our special moves completed, we are ready to finish this build video. We had a blast creating this character, and really hope you all enjoyed it. We've wanted to create both a necromancer and a support mage for a while and found that merging the two archetypes made for a fun character that avoided many of the stereotypes of necromancy. This also ended up turning into a no crafting build, so it makes for an especially fun playthrough if you're tired of grinding, alchemy, enchanting, or smithing. Thanks for supporting us by watching our videos. If you like what we do, please drop a comment and consider liking and subscribing to help us on our quest to keep the magic of Skyrim alive. We'll see you next week right here on Skypothesis.